This is not a flower, however much it may resemble one. It is an animal with several characteristics that normally one would expect to see only in plants. And we all know of carnivorous plants that behave like animals, such as this insect-eating specimen, the sundew plant. The leaves of this remarkable plant are covered with numerous hairs tipped with sticky glands. Leaves bend and curl around the insect caught on the sticky tips, completing its entanglement. Then the glands exude a digestive substance, enabling the plant actually to absorb material from the insect's body. The Venus flytrap is an extraordinary example of predatory plant. Its leaves fold rapidly when hairs on the inner surface are touched by an intruding insect. Many small digestive glands are scattered on the inner surface of each jaw. The jaws of the leaf are edged with interlocking teeth, which form a cage when closed to prevent the insect from escaping. Once triggered by the tension in the leaf tissue, the glands begin to work causing the insect to be ingested and absorbed. The cobra plant is another unique example of natural mutation. Small insects are lured into the mouth of the plant by the secretions of nectar glands on the surface of the leaf. The captive continues through a glassy zone finally to become enmeshed in an area of downward pointing hairs which serve to complete the entrapment of the lured creature. Subsequent digestion occurs through the simultaneous action of bacteria living within the plant and juices secreted by the inner walls of the leaf. Give me some light, please. You may think you are normal but you are all the product of mutations. Your ancestors, our ancestors, were freaks who only survived because they were stronger than the other forms of life around them. We don't know yet how these mutations happen, but we do know that mutations can be induced so that instead of endless accidental changes, we may be able to create the mutations of our choice and change our species or improve it. Do the accidental changes you mentioned include fetally deformed babies? The uh, tragedy of fetally deformed babies should show you what can happen when mutations are uncontrolled. But think of the glorious creatures of the future to be induced by genetic manipulation. The mysterious essence called nucleic acid theoretically can be blended to create new strains new forms of life, or to recreate extinct forms of life. Within 10 years, it is safe to say, we shall be able to recreate, through time-frozen amino acid strains, a living dinosaur to walk the Earth just as it did a million years ago. Already, through cloning, we will soon be able to take one cell from an individual and from it produce a hundred individuals identical with the cell's donor. Just think of having a uh, hundred Einsteins. 
Oh, yes, please. Or worse, imagine having hundreds of him running around. <laughs> we are interested in cloning, not in clowning, Mr. Croydon. <laughs> all right, th that's all for today. Thank you. <laughs> Living dinosaur? The man ought to be writing science fiction. I think he's sexy. You're mad. Totally flipped out. Anyway, who's coming to the airport terminal with me tomorrow? They've asked me to pick up that Fulbright scholar guy from America. I can't make it. Come afterwards. The tea records good stuff. Super. Okay. What kind of tea are you talking about? Indian, French, whatever you want or whatever. You want to come? Well, we'll be there. Hey, maybe we could get high on those nucleic acids. Then there might be a hundred more like you. Look up. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye then. Bye bye. Better, Professor. I've took my part of the wagon. Have you? Always. 
I've got something new for you, Professor. So that you can prove what a great man you are. my wagon. Now watch that menagerie. Or I'll put you in an institution where you belong. Ah, my money, my show, and my brains. What did you say, Burns? Nothing! Ugly bastard. Now stay away from that wagon! Oh, she's a fine specimen, Lynch. I've seen her somewhere before. She's a... Come on, let's get her to the operating table.
Nobody believes such things are possible. In her vital cells lies the mystery of all life and the solution to that mystery. Here, put this on. coming out of it. If only you understood what this means. What she represents. You and I together. we could accomplish the miracle. brilliant military career to pursue biochemistry, wins Rhodes Scholarship for postgraduate research with famous biochemist Professor Nolte. Well, you certainly seem to have been following the career of our friend with more attention than you pay to your studies. <laughs> Look who's talking. You almost fell asleep in biochem yesterday afternoon. Thank you. Where do you get all this stuff, anyway? I read it in Times magazine. Ah. You're Brian Redford. Right. Hi. I'm Tony Croydon. Tony. And uh, this is Lauren Bates. How are you, Lauren? Hattie Jensen. Hello. How do you do? Hi, Hattie. Well, you're welcoming committee. Right. Car's outside. How's it going to be a celebrity? We even read about you in Times. Yeah, well, that's yesterday's news. Cigarette? No small vices. No, nothing small.
let's see if we can reverse the process of fungus putrefaction with this orange. of an intense bombardment of rays from this newly developed form of cyclotron. A truly remarkable metamorphosis. Don't you agree, Mr. Redford? Oh, yes. I quite agree. In fact, I think the possibilities are fantastic. I assure you there is nothing of fantasy in this. The possibilities inherent in what you have just witnessed confound and surpass the most fecund fantasy. My theory of total genetics is all embracing. All living things are closely related and uh, all matter is related. Isn't that right, Mr. Croydon? Uh, yes, sir. I believe Einstein demonstrated something of the sort some time ago. He did indeed advance that theory. It was left to others to demonstrate it. For instance, imagine a new species composed of the characteristics of plants and animals. Well, you use your imagination. Plants able to move in search of better conditions of light, soil, water. Animals able to harness the rays of the sun directly through photosynthesis, absorbing nourishment through exposure to light. Well, no more state in kidney pie. A world without hunger. A world, therefore, of peace and tranquility with time to develop our true human potential. Even though, outwardly, we might look like plants, All right, that's all for today. Thank you. What you were saying in class, do you really believe that such a new species of plant animal could come about? Oh, yes, I'm convinced of it. Lysenko believed that heredity could be changed in one generation. I believe it can be changed in one day. A day? The, the secret lies uh, in the DNA, the amino acid which is the foundation of uh, all life forms. Look, why don't you come with me to my house, huh? I, uh, I think that you will be interested. The young people are confused and angry. World food famine, population explosion. We are facing extinction. We scientists have an obligation to do something about it. Some of us are doing something. Not tomorrow, but today. Surely developing a species of plant animal can only be in the distant future. Perhaps not so distant as you imagine.
It's so enormous. You can hardly believe it. These are the only ones in the world. It has taken me years to develop them to this size. As yet, I haven't been able to get them to reproduce. <laughs> but it's still a long way from the idea of fusion of plant and animal. I achieved this 10 years ago. That's incredible. Isn't the feeding of a plant with animal protein contrary to your concept of it's getting its nourishment from the atmosphere? Oh, yes, yes, of course, and that has to be the next step. I have spent my life trying to achieve the synthesis of two life forms, Mr. Redford, the creation of a new race of men with all the miraculous properties of a plant. Create a new race of men, Professor? Well, only in theory, of course, it would take place through evolution. And you believe evolution can occur through a series of discontinuous jumps? Oh, yes, yes, of course, by mutations. Well, also through a creative process. But we are on the verge of being able to accelerate the processes of evolution. How? By inducing such mutations what some people would refer to as the, the freak type. He's a freak too. He used to be in the show just like us. He had an act of his own. They called him the ugliest man in the world. Well, he's just as ugly inside as what he is outside. Suppose him and Burns ever get together. Seems an unlikely team. Some carnival they worked in together. Uh, Burns had a bit of savings and put up the money. Hmm. And I suppose Lynch took over. He's giving the orders now. And I reckon him and Burns put up to something really nasty. Well, you helped them chase that girl the other day. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I told you. We did it for a laugh. Burns said, we'll have some fun. We're just scared. Like big people scare us sometimes. Just having some fun. But it wasn't any fun watching Lynch grab her. I didn't know he was going to be there. It really scared me. I don't know why Burns is a party to that sort of thing. Maybe Lynch has got some hold over him. What do you suppose Lynch did with that girl? What do you think? No normal girl would give him the time of day. So he catches one. Does what he wants. When he's through, she's too dead scared to tell anyone. Well, he's making it dangerous for the rest of us. He treats us bad enough anyway. Well, I'm not getting into trouble working for somebody who does things like that. And that new act he bought in, the lizard woman, where did she come from? I don't know. But then she's not the first, is she? There were two others about a year ago. In the show for a few weeks, and then suddenly disappeared. Burns said their family wanted them back. Didn't want them in a show like this after all. That new one, I saw her for a minute when he brought her in. She looked really bad, real sickly. It keeps her locked up too, away from the rest of us. He shouldn't knock people up like that. I don't know. He shouldn't treat people the way he does anyway. Maybe we ought to have a talk with Burns about it. No use talking to Burns. He'll close up. He's in it as well, whatever it is. That's something for Dr. Nolter. No, she'd be too young for him. I didn't even know those shows still existed. Anyway, it's probably a fake. 
I don't know. It may be one of these mutations we were talking about. If he had his way, we'd all look like monkeys. Stop it, Tony. Wonder where Bridget can be. Yes, he invites us for tea and doesn't even turn up himself. Wasn't at any of our classes today either. Maybe Dr. Nolder's theories have frightened her away. <laughs> I wouldn't thought anything could frighten Bridget. No, I couldn't agree more. She's probably gone off for the weekend with some guy and forgotten all about your tea party. <laughs> <laughs> He's a brilliant man. Who is? Dr. Nolder. He's a leading scientist in his field today. If we both mean the same Dr. Nolder, I think he's slightly balmy. People are always saying that about someone they don't understand. Well, you don't really believe all that stuff about total genetics. He makes it sound like bad science fiction. What science can and is doing today once was science fiction. You're supposed to be a scientist yourself, Tony. Why don't you act like one? Look, as far as I'm concerned, to act like a scientist is to try to change for the better the lot of mankind and not man himself. I don't know whether Nolter is a madman or a genius, or both. But I think that ultimately he is wrong and he's dangerous. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to be turned into a vegetable. <laughs> There'll always be cabbages and kings. Nolter says we're all freaks anyway. I guess he's right. Actually, a friend of mine told me that after he'd been on an acid trip, he saw everybody has great big carrots with babies' faces on. <laughs> You're kidding. No. Yeah, I know a guy who thought he was a, a wild dog. A sort of animaloid human. <laughs> Born out of the unconscious racial genetic memory. Carl Jung. Carl Jung said <laughs> 30 years ago. What your professor Timothy Leary called the wolf image. Oh! That's wrong with it. That's bad for a limey. So what Come on, Tosh. Oh, yeah! 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 Two. Wow! <laughs> Who said we are the weaker sex? <laughs> oh, I haven't told you, have Well, I never said it. That's a blow for women's lips. Uh, That's a blow for women's lips. Let's try over here. Come on. Roll up, roll up, there's the bell. Inside folks, this way for your tickets. See the fire eater from Borneo. See the incredible Popeye, the man who actually pops his own eyes right out of his skull. And the feature attraction of our show, all the way from the roof of the world, from the snow-capped Himalayas, the lizard woman of Tibet. Hurry, Come on, let's folks, go. Hurry, this you sure way. you want to see that stuff? Oh, yes, it'd be fun. Well, if it's half as good as he makes out, it'll be worth all of Brian's money. Oh, wait a minute. Welcome to the Burns and Lynch, famous royal family of strange people. This collection of human oddities and freaks is the greatest attraction of its kind in the world. And now, without further ado, here is our first unusual curiosity. Thirty-five years ago, Diane was born a normal girl. At the age of twelve, a strange transformation began to take place. After consultation with several specialists, it was discovered that she was developing the characteristics of both sexes. Instead of becoming a normal young woman, she was becoming virtually a brother and sister in the same body. The bearded lady. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. <laughs> this is Mary Louise, the world-renowned monkey woman 
covered with long, shaggy hair from head to foot and with three rows of teeth. She is the foremost example of Darwin's missing link between ape and man, our earliest anthropoid ancestor, the unforgettable Mary Louise, the monkey woman. All well, sounds pretty hairy to me. Now another of our lovely assistants, Miss Kathy Kitchen, is bringing in Mr. George Podgers, the human pin cushion. 32 years old and never known a day's illness. Right, Mr. Podgers? That's right, Mr. Burns. I always feel fine. What he means is he doesn't feel, full stop. I first noticed this ability as a very small child when my mother stuck me accidentally with a safety pin. Suddenly he got the point. <laughs> Here is Manolito, the frog boy, or the upside-down man, depending on which way you look at him. Born with no calcium in his lower extremities, he learned to get around like this, upside down. Here's how he met his girlfriend. She dropped her handkerchief, and he picked it up. <laughs> Beginning of a new romance. He even won a dance contest, hands down. Thank you, Manolito. Here he goes again, showing off. present Esther Blackman, known as the Alligator Skin Girl. Well, I was born in the state of North Carolina, born of normal parents. I have one sister, three brothers, born perfectly normal. One brother, which has passed away, that was born in the same condition as I am, with a very dry, rough skin covering the whole body, which is known to medical doctors as ichthyosis skin but known now through the show world as the Alligator Skin Girl, also known as the world's strangest mother. Yes, I have been married and the mother of seven normal children. Now, as well as being misfortunately not to have a clear skin, also not to have hair to grow upon the head. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a truly remarkable human curiosity. Just one year ago, Leslie was a voluptuous and beautiful airline hostess. Then she went on a crash diet from which she never recovered. Today, she is the world's only living example of a human skeleton. And now our lovely assistant, Dolly, is bringing in our next attraction, Mr. Hugh Bailey, the pretzel man. Mr. Bailey will speak for himself. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't sing or dance turn flip-flops or anything like that. I'm here because of the unusual condition in which I was born. Now, this is the shin bone bent like that. Both legs are the same. The knees are up here. But they work all right. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take great pleasure in presenting the extraordinary, truly incredible, unduplicatable, the one and only attraction known as Popeye! Hold it, Wix. And it goes something like this. Easy done, all right? This is the portion of the act that I recently invented. Back home in Chicago, sitting all alone, one day in my bedroom, you know, nothing to do. Daydreaming, thinking of you, of course. I bought a twist and the last and the final potion, ladies and gentlemen, and goes like this. Ah! Ah! Thank you, Papa. That concludes the main portion of our show, ladies and gentlemen. But now here is that extra added attraction you've all been waiting for from the refuse heap of evolution, the principal attraction of our show, the lizard woman of Tibet. Due to the high cost of bringing her to you, and because of the special care and feeding required for this delicate creature, we are forced to impose a small extra charge, 10 pence only, for this particular exhibit. And for those of you who have the weak stomachs, our nurse, Molly, is again in attendance. Should you require any assistance... Let's go before they con us on anything else. Thank you, Mr. 
Oh, come on, Tony. Even if it's fake, let's look at it anyway. Just look at them. They must have seen something horrible. Come on. All right, if you want to be sick, let's go. Oh, uh, three and one half, please. Hey, isn't that the same medallion that Pritchett was wearing? Looks like it. And there must be thousands of them. Where did we get that medallion? I would like to have one too. I manufacture them myself, lady. Uh, sorry, all sold out. What do you mean, all sold out? You've got a whole roll of tickets there. I know there are a lot of tickets left, sir, but there's no more room in the house. Sorry. <laughs> and a load of old balls. Come on. You bloody fool. Why he wouldn't sell us any tickets? Maybe there isn't any real listeners. Anyway, Dr. Nolder would find some of those people interesting examples of his theory. The medallion still worries me. It's the same as Bridget's. She's still missing, you know. Don't worry, she's probably someplace having a ball. What are you doing here? You must find me another subject. It's not that easy. We have the show to take care of. Let Burns look after that. You've got your own work to do. That is, if our agreement still stands. Does it have to be another female? No. At this stage of the work, a man would do as well, or perhaps even better. But it must be a strong, healthy, good-looking specimen. Not like me, eh, Professor? But you'll fix that, won't you? Oh, yes, Lynch. Yes, yes. What about the girl? Felice might track her here. Let her stay in the show. It'll be less dangerous. I promise you. Nobody would recognize her now. Too bad we missed that phony lizard lady. You mean the monkey lady isn't real either? Sure, she just hasn't shaved for a while. <laughs> <laughs> You're impossible. Come on. Good night. Good night. Bye.
of my plants, a new species, at last an, an influenced mutation. It's going to work this time. It has to. It has to work. And then you'll keep your promise and make it work for me. You'll soon be neither human being nor plant, but with the characteristics and advantages of both a plant that can move and think. A man who can set down roots. Yes. That's all we can do for now. We have to wait. What about me? How long do I have to wait? I have told you when I... I can't wait! Maybe there's no way to kill me. And you just said that to keep me working for you. Come with me. I have something to show you. This is a new virus I'm developing. A mutation. I hope it will uh, reverse the effects of your uh, deformity. Yes. Take a look. Your uh, glandular disease. celebrate Kathy's birthday. You expect me to sit down with a bunch of freaks? You don't have to sit, Mr. Lynch. You may stand. Yes, we don't mind if you celebrate with us, Mr. Lynch, do we? No, he's one of us. Yes, let's toast to that. Here's to Mr. Lynch. We accept you. He's one of us. Yes. Our brother. Shut up! Our loving father. Who is Make 
make us sorry we were ever born. So you think it's funny? Everything is ruined. Ruined. Never mind, my dear. We'll have another party someday. Aren't you going to have a drink with us to help celebrate Kathy's birthday? Yes, we don't mind if you celebrate with us, Mr. Lynch. He's one of us. Yes, he's one of us. Our loving father who looks after us. We accept you. And now presents you, Mr. Lynch, the ugliest man in the world. He's one of us. Make a sign if you were ever born. <laughs> Give dancing lessons. Yeah. Come in. So you're looking for some fun this evening? You know why I'm here. Well, why don't you take off your hat and coat? Let's see what you look like underneath that hat of yours. Oh. I told her not to. Oh, don't worry. You can stay. I've seen all kinds of things in this game. You're a pretty one, though, aren't you? Look, spend a little extra, and I'll be extra nice to you. Or shall I give it to you straight? Short and sweet. Two pounds. I want you to say things to me. Oh, well, I've got a nice selection of obscenities, if that's what you want. No, nothing like that. Just tell me. Just say. Oh, come on, love. I haven't got all night. What? Just say, I love you. Oh, yeah. That'll be a pound extra. I love you. Yes, I know. Now try not to worry. Goodbye, love. There's still no news of Tony. Now Lauren has been calling his flat all day. There's no answer. Because he even went around there. Well, there's no need to panic. He's only been gone for a day. He's got to stay always together. Now he would have called. But he hasn't heard a thing. It's so strange. And Bridget, it's over a week now since she disappeared. I never met her, but I understand she wasn't exactly the disappearing type. Brian, something is wrong. I know it. Look, I'm 
sure there's a logical explanation. Tell you what, if Tony doesn't turn up by tomorrow, they will notify the police. Okay? How did she die? She just died. Like the others? Oh, she was breathing strangely, and then all of a sudden she... Well, anyway, we've got to get rid of her. I'll take care of it. Looney, I've been so worried about you. Why didn't you call? As fast as you can. I can't wait to see you. Hurry, darling. I think I have succeeded, but he got away. There was a struggle. You've got to find him, Lynch, or bring me someone else. Tony?
Specie Brett. I'm at 53 Lindley Street. There's a woman here who's been screaming her head off. She's now unconscious and could have been attacked. Better get a doctor. I'm going to search the flat. Over and out. Is there anything we can do? Oh, no, thank you, sir. If you just stay outside. Go. It was some kind of a shock. This sort of thing takes a very long time to come out of. Give her one of these every three hours and call me if there's any change. Yes, Doctor. I'll uh, call back again later. Goodbye, Mr. Redford. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. Thank you. She's just lying there like a zombie. Look at her. You look as if you could do with a rest yourself, it seems to me. I'm all right. If there's any change, please call the number I gave you. I will. Take me home, Brian. Good night, nurse. See you in the morning. Poor child. Whatever she saw was real. She wasn't dreaming. And so terrifying that she closed her mind, retreating from it. Oh, Brian, it's awful. And she's been so worried about Tony. That could have something to do with it. Maybe something happened to him and she found out about it. Darling, we have to find him. He's the only one who can help. Well, we can't do any more tonight. Get some rest. I'll come around later. in your cages. What do you want? More money? Why don't you go on strike, eh? <laughs> us like that. He treats us like animals. He's no better than we are. All right, stop all your grumbling. Now, you've all got good homes here, and you know it. We're all a family, one big happy family. Let's keep it that way. Look, Mr. Burns, you're a decent man. You're not like him. Lynch is the one we're after ticking off. He's a cruel man, he is. We've been treated poorly by the outside world. We thought we'd have some kind of home here. But we're still hated, and we're still afraid. Just remember, he's on our side, really, and it's just us against all the rest of the world. Let's not fight among ourselves. Then why do you hate him so much? Not finished with it? Finished with our own business? Not so loud. I don't care who hears. You're in this as much as I am, or Nolta. And don't you forget it. Prove it! Now look, Lynch, we've had a good run in this place. We've got a bit of money saved. Now let's get out while we can. We've been partners in every kind of thing, Burns. Come on, Burns. Just this one last time. Notice there's just one more. And then it'll be our turn. Your turn! It can make our guns work right. Make us normal. Don't you want to be normal, Burns? I don't want any trouble with the police. 
Now, they must be investigating already. First that young girl, and then the young man, both in the same university, both in the same week. You get a girl, Ron. Very easy. Very pretty. Not after he gets through with them. No, not this time. I am leaving. Come along with the carnival if you want to, or you can stay here with Nolte. Oh, all right. All right. I'll go alone. But you have the wagon later at Nolte to pick me up, or I'll kill you. I'm on a bad trip or something. All right. Try and relax. I'll be right over. Okay? Please. And hurry. Tony, it's me, Tony. Tony. Don't come any closer. I'm changed. You mustn't but, see. But Tony. No! No! No control. No Tony. My brain, right? Write down what I say. Delta, experimenting you. Human beings, and not human, must get no to. Oh, Tony!
They'll be looking for her in the morning. They won't find her. I'm almost there. And this one won't get away. Any chances of being interrupted? Not now. Why didn't you ring the bell? It would have been much easier, don't you think? Where is she? Who?
You too. I need you. 